Well, it's hard to say goodbye and let go. And it's hard to see it end when the memories we have made will never happen again. But it's harder for time to ever erase the together times we shared. So when we're apart. Remember all the love we've shared together, and for all this love, thank the Lord above who showed us the way that we can be together forever. Someday we can be. Together forever, someday we can be together forever, someday. He lives to comfort me when faint. He lives to hear my soul's complaint. He lives and grants me daily bread. He lives so we can conquer death. Eternal home he has prepared. He lives. We can be together forever someday. We can be together forever someday. Jesus Christ was the one that made it possible for us to be together forever as a family. And Jesus could only do this most wonderful of all things if we did our part. When I found out that my Heavenly Father sent Jesus Christ to pave the way for me to return to Him, it gave me hope. If you feel that now is the time for you to learn more about our Heavenly Father's plan and the happiness it can bring you and your family today and forever, please talk to a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We can be together forever someday. I call the Honourable Member for... Uh, for um, Yes, Jellybrand. Yes, Jelly Brand. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise tonight to note the Australian Law Reform Commission's final report on its inquiry into the Copyright Act commissioned by the previous Labor government entitled Copyright and Digital Economy. Considering 870 submissions collected over 18 months and providing over 400 pages of analysis, the report is a definitive articulation of the challenges that face Australian copyright law in the digital era. Among the recommendations of this report was a clear endorsement of the adoption of a broad fair use exception to copyright law in Australia, rather than the current narrow and prescriptive fair dealing exemptions in the Act. For copyright reform advocates such as myself, the report is a landmark moment in the journey towards a copyright law that will help, not hinder, Australia's digital economy. The introduction of fair use principles into our copyright legislation would both protect the legitimate interests of content creators and allow those wanting to transform copyrighted material the space to develop and innovate within prescribed legal boundaries. 
The significance of this recommendation is highlighted by Google's submission to the LRC, where it asserted that, quote, it could not have started its business in Australia under the current copyright framework. Nor, might I add, could have Apple or Facebook. Madam Speaker, I want companies like this to start in Australia. A copyright regime that permits innovation is required to attract the companies and communities that will make Australia a leader in the digital century ahead. Many online communities often transform others' copyrighted work by adding new uses for data or creating completely new artistic works through what US academic Lawrence Lessig calls remix culture. They may create content like the political satire videos of Australian Hugh Atkin, who uses sample clips of Australian and US political culture to entertain millions of fans. Such an active relationship between content creators and their audiences should be celebrated, not punished, so long as these new uses are not unfair, considering a range of explicit considerations. But there are some who look upon this bright digital future and see only, the, only a challenge to their expansive current rights, and they have the ear of our current Attorney-General. In a speech responding to the ALRC report at the Australian Digital Alliance Conference, the Attorney-General expressed doubt about the benefits of fair use provisions. He instead focused his speech on, and his reforming intention on a three strikes regime for alleged copyright infringers. In response to this speech, the online journalist Stilkerian expressed dismay, but not surprise, because the Attorney General, quote, is a conservative minister in a conservative government. But I think the Attorney General would reject this title. In fact, he devoted more than 6,500 words to disowning the title of conservative in his 2009 Alfred Deakin lecture entitled we believe the Liberal Party and the Liberal cause. In this opus, the Attorney General argued for a Liberal Party that represents small L liberal ideas and cites, I know Madam Speaker will approve, from Hayek's seminal essay, Why I am not a Conservative, quoting, There has never been a time when liberal ideals were fully realised and when liberalism did not look forward to further improvements of institutions. The Attorney General seems not to realise that Hayek, a genuine Liberal, was very much interested in the further improvement of the institutions of intellectual property. In his essay, Individualism and the Economic Order, Hayek reflected on the law, of, the law underpinning inventions, copyright, trademarks and the like, arguing, and I quote, it seems to me beyond doubt that in these fields a slavish application of the concept of property, as it has been developed for material things, has done a great deal to foster the growth of monopoly, and that here drastic reforms may be required if competition is to be made to work. Hayek later noted in The Fatal Conceit that it is not obvious that the forced scarcity created by a restrictive copyright is the most effective way to stimulate the human creative process. I doubt whether there exists a single great work of literature which we would not possess had the author been unable to obtain exclusive copyright for it. It seems, Madam, uh, seems Senator Brandis' commitment to liberalism dominates his speeches but doesn't make it into his legislative agenda. This is a blind spot shared by others on the right. Our new Freedom Commissioner, Tim Wilson, wrote a lengthy defence of an absolutist approach to, to IP in his days as the head of the IP uh, division at the Institute of Public Affairs. In his IPA background at Intellectual Property Matters, Wilson seems blissfully unaware of the liberal critique of intellectual property, advocating instead the Peruvian economist Hernando de Soto's work on property rights. He explicitly ignores Hayek's warning and slavishly applied the concept of property as it's been developed for material things to intellectual property. Wilson's position may have been the result of his sadly inaccurate belief that a fair use exemption already existed under Australian copyright law, observable in his statement that cop, quote, copyright protection is exempted under fair use provisions which allow persons to reproduce the work uh, within a limited framework. We see then that in the Liberal Party, individuals' freedoms stand for little in the face of vested interests, seeking to expand a private statutory monopoly. The Attorney General concluded his Deakin essay by noting it is still all too easy to forget that what it is that makes us Liberals. The Liberal Party sometimes forgot, forgets this too. Madam Speaker, when it comes to intellectual property, the Liberal Party has forgotten the principles it's on which it claims to stand. Have you ever left a girl in a bus station? Have you ever felt the atmosphere of her heart? Now you're way too far 
are so we're not how we could have been Words are just words, they are nothing more Simple letters and a row with nothing to show You see, it's not that hard to see Nothing more than nothing A fucking tragedy I see I am so blind to see That you gave up on Have you ever felt the atmosphere of 